In this video, I'll show you my method for cutting a simple dovetail joint with woodworking hand tools. The first thing I do when cutting dovetails by hand is to use a marking gauge to lay out a baseline. I set my marking gauge cutter to just barely hang over the edge of the board. I mark all ends of the boards. I also use a fine tipped pencil to darken my cutting gauge lines so I can see them better. Next uh, I place one of my boards in my workbench vise to lay out the tails. There's no rule for how far in to measure your half pins, but one easy method is to eyeball half the thickness of your board with a combination square or dividers and make a tick mark from each end of the board. Then I use a square to mark a line on each tick mark. I use a pair of dividers to lay out the tails evenly. In this case I try to adjust the dividers until I can take two steps between the lines because I want two tails. And however far past the line I go is the size of my pin. I push the dividers into the wood from both lines. This method for laying out tails certainly isn't necessary. You can just eyeball the placement. Then I take the square again and draw lines across each of the two divider points. Now I take a sliding bevel square to extend the angled lines. Contrary to popular belief, the angle doesn't have to be a specific number. Just use an angle that looks good to you and isn't too vertical or overly angled. Again, I use a fine pencil to draw these lines so that my cutting can be more accurate. I then mark my waist so I don't accidentally saw into my tails. The first thing I do is use my dovetail saw to cut in the waist area and right up next to the line. I try to leave just the pencil line and no more. Just be careful to watch your lines all the time, including your baseline, so you don't cut over it. You can see here how my saw cut is right up against the lines. I have left the lines and no more. Now I grab a coping saw to cut out the waste wood. As I'm sawing, I slowly turn the saw inward toward the waste. I saw down close to the baseline, but I'm careful to not hit the baseline. To cut the half pin waist off, I first set the chisel into the marking gauge line with the bevel toward the waist. I push down somewhat hard, or take a couple of light taps on the chisel with a mallet. Then I turn the chisel at an angle and cut out a little notch like this. This little notch will make it easier for my hand saw to track and not cut into the shoulder. I then use a back saw with crosscut teeth to cut off the waste piece. If you've only got a dovetail saw with rip teeth, that's all right too, because the teeth are so small, so you won't notice a big difference. Now I use a chisel to clean up the tails. I make sure that the chisel is a bit narrower than the base of my tails. I don't cut right up to the baseline yet, Otherwise, it'll push all that waste past my baseline. I try to remove about half of the waste. And then if it's possible, I try to remove half of the waste again. Once the remaining waste gets to be quite small, then I drop my chisel right into the marking gauge line. I take a couple of light taps, and then I tip the chisel at a slight angle and use a wooden mallet to chop down to about halfway through the board. This angled undercut will make a slight valley so I don't have waste in the way when I'm fitting the joint together. I then repeat the same process on the other side of the board. You can see a slight valley that I created when I undercut with the chisel. If you've cut further away from the pencil line than I have here, now is a good time to use a chisel to remove the wood up to the line. Now that my tail board is finished, I'll trace the pattern of the tails onto the pin board. I grab a flashlight and set it under the joint like this. 
and I grabbed something like a square or chisel to align the two boards together. I also moved the tailboard back and forth until I can see light between the two boards, but not direct light, just opaque light through the wood fibers. Once the boards are lined up, I use a sharp and thin marking knife to trace the tails onto the end grain of the pin board. After I remove my tailboard, it's a bit tough to see the knife lines. And they also follow the slight imperfection of my tails. So I use a wider chisel to deepen these lines. And like before, I put the bevel into the waste area. Otherwise, the bevel will prevent me from getting straight pins. I'm careful to not push too hard because the board can split quite easily while doing this. Then to make my lines even more visible, I use a fine tip pencil to darken these chisel lines. I take a square and extend the line straight down the face of the board. Now I pick up the dovetail saw again and saw next to the pencil lines, like before. Only this time I don't tilt the saw at an angle. I just rotate my saw in a different way and cut straight down the board. But as long as you're watching your layout lines and cut right next to them, your cut will look great. Like before, I use a coping saw to remove the waste from the pin board. Now I turn to using a chisel to chop out the remaining waste. I also like to start with the board in this configuration, which will make more sense in a minute. And like before, I try to remove half of the waste until I'm really close to the baseline. Again, I lean the chisel back slightly and make an undercut to about halfway through the board. Then I flip the board over to the other side. That requires an extra little step. I do everything the same as on the first side, but this time when I get down to the baseline, I take a couple of taps with the chisel. And then I not only lean the chisel back to make an undercut, but I also tilt the chisel slightly to the side to avoid chopping down into the pins. Once the chopping is finished, I use a smaller chisel to clean up the gunk inside the joint. Again, I try to remove all the wood up to the pencil lines, but I try not to go over the pencil lines. You can also use a larger chisel to pare the rough sides of the pins and half pins down to the pencil lines. Now I try a test fit. I do this with my hand so I don't force a joint together that is too tight. Most of the time, I'm able to get the joint to fit together on the first try, but occasionally I'll have to pull the joint apart and look for more gunk that needs to be removed. At this point, I'm pretty confident that I've removed all of the extra waste and I didn't see the joint splitting on the first fit, so I feel better about using a rubber mallet to lightly tap the joint together. And here you can see how nicely this joint fits together with no gaps. And after a little hand planing, the joint looks really great. So that's how I cut dovetails with hand tools. If you found this video to be helpful or interesting, please subscribe to my channel below and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when my next video comes out. If you have any questions or you want to share some of your own tips on dovetailing, I'd love that. Please do so below this video. And while you're down there, I'd be grateful if you give this video a little thumbs up. It only takes you a second and it really helps me out a lot. So I'll see you next time here in my shop.